I learned how to fish from my father, who learned it from my grandfather. I have been fishing for 30 years now and have experienced the worst condition at sea. A year ago, I lost two of my friends when their boat capsized as they were trying to return to shore in very bad weather. I almost lost my life at sea. I always fear for my husband's life every time he goes out fishing. If he gets hurt or gets lost at sea, my children and I would be in a very bad situation. Fishing is one of the most dangerous occupations in the world, with more than 24,000 fatalities every year. It is estimated that in some countries, the capsizing of fishing vessels accounts for over 50% of fatalities. This situation, however, can be remedied. The skipper and his crew and fishing vessel owners, with the assistance of experts such as the naval architect and boat builder, can act to ensure the safety of their fishing vessels. At the heart of fishing vessel safety is the concept of fishing vessel stability. Simply put, stability means the tendency of a boat to return to an upright position after an external force like a wave or the wind has healed it. A well-designed boat that is properly loaded and operated has a lot of writing energy and is able to recover from large angles of heel. No boat can be guaranteed to be stable, however. In other words, even the best boat can capsize if the skipper and crew ignore the limits of its design or if the sea overwhelms it. Mistakes such as trying to take too big a load or failing to keep the boat watertight reduce the capacity of the boat to return to an upright position. As many have experienced, the result can be disastrous. The safety of fishing vessels and fishermen has been a matter of concern for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, or FAO, since its establishment. FAO has cooperated with the International Labour Organization and the International Maritime Organization in developing safety standards for fishing vessels and fishermen. The purpose of this DVD is to introduce some basic principles of fishing vessel stability and provide guidance on what fishing vessel crews can do to maintain adequate stability for their vessels. This DVD is useful not only to fishermen and their families, but also to fishing vessel owners, boat builders and competent authorities who have an interest in the safety of fishing vessels and fishermen. The responsibility of ensuring that a fishing vessel is sufficiently stable is shared by the designer, the owner, the skipper and the crew. The designer or the naval architect who designs a new vessel or evaluates an existing one establishes a set of limits that govern what the vessel is capable of doing safely. For example, the naval architect determines how much catch the vessel can carry and how the vessel's ability to carry catch changes as the fuel and stores are used up. In order to do this, he records his recommendations in a stability documentation that should be carried on board at all times. This documentation gives you indications on the correct loading of your boat. Once he has done his job, it's up to the owner, skipper and crew to operate the vessel within the limits established in the stability documentation. There may come a time when the owner of a fishing vessel would like to consider alterations to his vessel. In this case, he should have the stability documentation checked before any alterations are undertaken. Such alterations may be, for example, removing or shifting of the permanent ballast, conversion to new fishing methods, and change of the main engine. Always remember that the stability of the fishing vessel is reduced any time you add weight on or above the working deck, or remove weight from the bottom of your boat.
As the skipper, I have the overall responsibility for the safety of the crew and the safe operation of my fishing vessel. It is up to me to decide when to go fishing and how much catch to take on board and when to quit. The skipper doesn't have to be a naval architect, but he has to understand the basic factors that govern the stability of his vessel. The stability documentation is made to enable him to judge the stability of his vessel in any operating condition. All instructions concerning the vessel's stability issued by the competent authority should be strictly observed. The skipper can't just store the stability documentation in the chart table and forget about it without violating good seamanship and common sense. Each crew member also has the responsibility to be alert and aware of potential stability hazards. The skipper can't be everywhere at once. For example, each crew member has to keep an eye out for dangerous conditions like free water in the bilge, take care that the freeing imports are open and that water on deck is free to go out, or help keep the boat watertight by closing doors, hatches and any other deck openings. Oh, everyone <laughs> of us is responsible for the stability of the boat. <laughs> This DVD introduces you to some basic stability principles. In addition to the information provided in this DVD, you should also consult other references to increase your knowledge. Additional information may be found in national regulations on fishing vessel safety and in particular the requirements on stability. There are also publications available in several languages that provide notes on good practice in fishing vessel stability. You should also consult with your naval architect routinely. You need to be sure you understand the stability documentation and make sure that he understands how you operate your vessel. Maintaining stability is a tough job because it isn't constant condition. It changes with every liter of fuel you burn and every liter of fresh water you drink. It changes with every strain in the gear and every fish you bring aboard. It changes every time the wind hits your beam and every time a wave passes underneath the hull. A well-designed boat should have enough stability reserve built into its hull and superstructure to enable you to withstand a storm at sea as long as the boat is seaworthy and properly loaded. In the competition on the fishing ground, fishermen often try to carry the biggest payloads their vessels can handle. It's up to the skipper to put the safety and the stability of the vessel first. Taking on a deck load of fish doesn't make good sense if it jeopardizes your ability to make it home. Another thing to consider is that boats get heavier as they get older. When you convert to a new fishing style, the added weight might be substantial and should automatically trigger a new stability evaluation. Draft marks are excellent means of determining whether your boat has grown and how heavily it is loaded. Whether or not you have draft marks, you should stand back and look at how your vessel floats at every chance you get. Your first source of information is your vessel stability documentation. If you don't have one or can't understand the one you have, you are already in trouble. Make sure the stability documentation has pictures or diagrams that clearly show the safe ways to load your vessel.
As a supplement to the approved stability information, the initial stability can be approximately determined by means of a rolling period test. We will explain to you later how to perform this simple and useful test. An experienced skipper's gut feeling is probably the best stability computer there is, and certain conditions or motions ought to set alarm bells ringing in every skipper's head. For example, high weights are dangerous, such as tanks or barrels for extra fuel or water that are placed above the working deck. Placing weights on the top of the wheelhouse, such as large quantities of fish for drying, is extremely dangerous. Hey, 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 there! Don't load dry fish on the top, it will affect the stability. When there is a choice between carrying a load on deck or in the hold, it should be kept low. Another thing to remember is that a suspended weight acts as if it is at the tip of the boom. Too much weight is dangerous. You should not risk one last haul if your boat has reached its stability limit. Loose water is dangerous. Loose water on deck is doubly dangerous because it's free to move and changes the vessel's centre of gravity because it is a high weight. It's impossible to avoid water getting on deck. This is the reason why your boat has freeing ports at the base of the bulwark, and they have to be kept clear to ensure the quick release of water trapped on deck. These ports should not be blocked in order to prevent loose fish from being washed overboard. Free liquids in tanks are another hazard. Wherever possible, tanks should be kept full or completely empty, and liquids should not be shifted between tanks when there are other stability hazards present. Catch that is free to move on deck or in the hold behaves just like a free liquid. Pound boards or hold dividers should be used to restrain it. Your vessel should be just that, a vessel that keeps you in and the water out. Open hatches, doorways and other openings through which water can enter into the hull or deck houses and so on are dangerous especially in heavy seas. Keep them closed whenever there is no specific reason for having them open and make sure the fittings for closing and securing hatch covers, doors and so on are in good shape. You should pay constant attention to the way your boat rolls. If it takes longer and longer for the boat to complete a roll, your stability is decreasing and you are in danger. Watch the end of the roll. If the boat hangs at the end of the roll, instead of immediately returning to the upright, you are in real danger. Whenever your boat heels to one side more than the other, you need to investigate the cause. If it's a list caused by too much weight on a side, you can probably fix it. First, pump out loose water, then move weights to the higher side or shift fuel or water. If there is no obvious off-centred weight or loose water problem causing the list, but you're heavily loaded or have weight up high, you have to be very careful. In this condition, shifting weights might cause the boat to roll so quickly that it capsizes. Your only option is to throw some of the weight over the side or at least get it as low as possible. If your boat doesn't roll but lolls on one side and then flaps over on the other side, you are already beyond the normal limits of stability and you're in real trouble. Stop everything else immediately and get rid of loose water and high weights.